On October 23rd last year, a Moscow audience was enjoying the Russian capital's latest theatrical craze, the musical Nord Ost, when the unthinkable happened. A group of 50 terrorists brandishing guns and wired with explosives laid siege to the theatre. The siege went on for days as the whole world watched, waiting to see how the hundreds of hostages could be saved. Russian special forces pumped a powerful knockout gas into the theater. And while they slept, the terrorists were eliminated one by one with a shot to the head. More than 100 of the captives also died, poisoned by the gas. But for the Russian government and President Vladimir Putin, this was a proud achievement, a courageous stand in the global war against terror. Россия не пойдет ни на какой сговор с террористами и не будет поддаваться никакому шантажу. But more than six months after the incident at the Moscow Theatre, there are many unanswered questions about the terrorist siege. Perhaps the most serious of which is why all the sleeping terrorists were eliminated before they could be questioned. Какая необходимость была российским спецслужбам уничтожить всех захватчиков, когда они уже были абсолютно безопасны? Они практически были беззащитны и беспомощны, да? Их спящими просто умертвили. Я думаю, необходимо было все-таки, чтобы они остались живы, и они дали ответы на многие вопросы, которые мы сегодня ставим. И также ставит и российская общественность. Ахмед Закаев was a Chechen government minister before becoming a rebel field commander in the armed struggle against the Russian army. But he once had a very different career. Профессия у меня была самая, скажем так, из гуманных. Я работал актером в театре. Закон... Ну, вначале я закончил училище хореографическое. Now Zakayev has been thrust onto the international stage, cast as Russia's most wanted terrorist. In fact, for a time, Russian authorities accused him of masterminding the Nordos theatre siege, an allegation he strongly denies. Нет, конечно. Нет, конечно, это неправда. После трагедии 11 сентября Россия как раз таки с первостепенной задачей у них была, чтобы нас перевести в разряд вот международных террористов. Eight years on from his time as a rebel commander, Russia now wants to extradite Sakaev from London to face charges of murdering over 300 policemen during the first Chechen war. But he says it's the Russian government that has the most blood on its hands. И если вы знаете, что в первую российскую чеченскую войну было жертв намного больше, чем 300 милиционеров. Их со стороны гражданского населения чеченцы более 100 тысяч. But the Kremlin says crimes against civilians are being investigated. Official presidential spokesman Alexander Machevsky says anyone accused of war crimes will be tried in Russian courts. The crimes that committed in Chechnya, whoever they are, uh, bureaucrats, military, law enforcement, bandits or terrorists will be investigated and these people will be caught and courted. The big concern for everybody here who's been planning the relief efforts in Jordan and elsewhere... As Ahmed Zakayev sits in his hotel room observing the Iraq war live, the war in Chechnya, his war, continues to exact a far heavier toll, but out of sight of the world's media. полный ход использовали эту ситуацию. То есть, с 2001 года, 
года по сей день можно считать в Чечне уничтожено более 20 тысяч мирных граждан. И все это делается под молчаливым согласием всего международного сообщества. Закаев calls himself a freedom fighter, but says he's committed to a peaceful political solution for Chechnya. That's rejected by the Russian government, which likens him to Osama bin Laden. What we have in his accusations is definitely uh, uh, not a political accusations. It's accusation in torturing person, particularly shutting his fingers off, if you want to know. Uh, particular accusations in um, uh, fighting against Russian law enforcement and also the uh, having um, the attempting assassination of the representative of law enforcement. So these kind of accusations uh, are not political. Uh, they are criminal. Yet just six years ago, the Russians negotiated a formal peace treaty with those they now call terrorists, when Boris Yeltsin recognized the elected Chechen president, Aslan Maskhadov. Russia's military and security services had been humiliated by the war and the peace treaty. They were determined that a bunch of Muslim rebels weren't going to threaten Russia's sovereignty. Allahu Akbar! Days after Vladimir Putin became Prime Minister in September 1999, terrorist bombs ripped through several apartment buildings, killing hundreds of sleeping victims. As Dateline revealed in a broadcast two weeks ago, there's compelling evidence to suggest that Russia's security service, the FSB, were involved in the bombings. Even leading politicians have been urging the government to hold an official inquiry to investigate the claims. Their suspicions were heightened earlier this year when Sergei Yushenkov one of the politicians pressuring the government over the bombing claims was assassinated. Как раз таки уже ни у кого нет сомнений в том, что это были проведенные спецоперации российскими спецслужбами для того, чтобы начать вторую военную кампанию и привести к власти никому неизвестного подполковника ФСБ Владимира Путина. Вот с этой целью и были проведены эти операции. But Russia's official response was to blame the Chechen rebels for the terrorist blasts, and Putin commenced the second Chechen war. Well, it's been a cruel, bloody, vicious civil war. That's the only way to describe it. Lord Frank Judd is a former British Defence Minister and a prominent member of the Council of Europe. His job as the Council's rapporteur for Chechnya gave him rare access to the horrors of this hidden war. The visions of the human situation there were, uh, will be with me all my life. I mean, I can see the people. I can see Grozny. I was one of the first people from the outside world into Grozny after the bombardment. Those things will be with me for the rest of my life. Can't walk away from it. Within weeks of the start of the war, atrocities from both sides were being reported. A German television station was the first to broadcast evidence of mass graves in Chechnya. Later, Amnesty International accused the Russian army of summary executions, rape and torture. Right now there is around 70 uh, criminal cases uh, sent to court against the military personnel. Uh, around 53, 53 people, 53 uh, military personnel are being sentenced for the crimes against the civil population, including about 10 officers. Кстати, основная проблема, почему Путин не может закончить войну, это потому что он боится ответственности за те преступления, которые совершили за эти три года. 
То есть там убито большое количество людей, похищено, и они в ямах там. Alexander Litvinenko was a lieutenant colonel in Russia's Federal Security Bureau, the FSB, and served with them in Chechnya. He has written a book exposing FSB crimes, detailing their links with Russia's mafia, drug running, and the assassination of politicians. He went public with his expose after being ordered by the FSB to kill the Russian oligarch and billionaire Boris Berezovsky, an arch rival of President Putin. Он подошел ко мне еще так нагнулся. Тебе надо убить Березовского. Вот тебе это надо сделать. After fleeing Russia, Litvinenko now lives in exile in London, where he's become a harsh critic of the Russian government and its secret services. He believes that President Putin is afraid that he'll be blamed for Russia's war crimes in Chechnya. Выступления совершены по указанию Путина. На Путине больше вины, чем на Милошевиче. И Путин прекрасно понимает, что за Милошевичем он может быть следующий. For almost two years prior to the Nordos siege, Chechen representatives had been presenting evidence to European investigators about war crimes, and finally their claims were being listened to. И чеченцев начали признавать в Европе. С ними начали встречаться. То есть до Нордоста, я вам хочу напомнить, предшествовала встреча Закаева с госпожой Дель Понте. Это прокурором в отношении преступления в Югославии. То есть это очень сильно испугало Кремль. Значит, из Закаева начали принимать в Европарламенте и начали люди смотреть на чеченскую проблему немножко другими глазами. The momentum for European investigations into war crimes was reaching a peak just as the Nordost siege occurred. Именно Нордост появился тогда, когда Закаева и чеченцев начали признавать в Европе. Litvinenko believes the FSB were involved in the Nordost siege, and although he has no hard evidence, he raises a series of questions about the government's account. He believes it's ludicrous to suggest that armed terrorists could cross Moscow unnoticed. I will tell you, in any circumstances, they could not gather 50 Kavkazians with weapons in their hands and pass unnoticed in Moscow in a camouflaged form. То есть это все равно, что, знаете, вот если сравнить, если бы сейчас Бен Ладен собрал 30 боевиков с Афганистана, приехали в Вашингтон и, значит, с оружием в руках поехали, захватили там какое-нибудь какое здание. Вы можете себе представить, что Бен Ладен сейчас с оружием в руках разъезжал по Москве? Despite a six-month investigation, the government still won't respond to questions like these. Uh, we have the information, but again, I would like to leave it for the investigation. And as soon as the investigation will be over, we definitely make it available for the public. Litvinenko also raises questions about two of the terrorists involved in the siege who appear to have mysteriously disappeared. A former Secret Service colleague, Mikhail Trapashkin, was called by the FSB to the Moscow morgue to identify two terrorists known as Abdul the Bloody and Abu Bakar, whom he dealt with before as FSB informants, but their bodies couldn't be found. Когда начали устанавливать этого Абу Бакара и Абдула среди убитых, их среди убитых террористов не было. То есть ФСБ свою агентуру вывела. То есть агенты ФСБ из лица, из лиц чеченской национальности по указанию ФСБ, я уверен, организовали все это, а потом, чтобы этих агентов вывели. Litvinenko is convinced from his own experiences inside the FSB and from contacts still serving in the security bureau that they are capable of directly organizing such an act of terrorism. А потом, чтобы этих агентов вывели, а чтобы на них не показали, всех остальных в любых спецслужбах есть такой термин. Любой офицер спецслужбы скажет, использовать в темную. То есть человека спецслужбы используют в темную, через своего агента в темную. 
Litvinenko claims that the missing Chechens, Abdul the Bloody and Abu Bakar, were FSB agents who hatched up the idea of the theatre siege and persuaded other Chechens to join them without disclosing their real connections. Вот этих террористов, которые убили, они были использованы в темную Абдулом и, Абду, и Абубакаром, в отношении которых у нас есть данные, что они сотрудничают с ФСБ, с органами Федеральной службы безопасности Российской Федерации. Uh, people try to uh, to make up. They're trying to uh, to make the governments somehow to react to make that as a topic. But this is not a topic to discuss. This extraordinary series of allegations are also being pursued by an unofficial committee of Russia's parliament and local journalists. Dateline has put every one of them to the Russian government, but their spokesman declined to answer them directly. However, he does confirm that the missing Abu Bakr was present at the siege. In fact, he was the ringleader. Uh, I won't comment on that. Uh, and I also don't want to comment anything that Mr. Litvinenko says. But uh, returning to the Abu Bakr, uh, we believe that that was the uh, real uh, or, uh, kind of uh, force behind the terrorist act in Nordost. When Russian special forces filled the theatre with their poisonous concoction of gas, there was no way out. Along with the hostages, every single one of the terrorist gang was put to sleep. Minutes later, whilst unconscious, they were executed one by one. Ни один закон, ни один закон российский, ни один закон, ни при каких обстоятельствах. Не, не разрешает ни при каких обстоятельствах не разрешает убивать человека, который не оказывает сопротивления. According to the Kremlin, the executions were performed to prevent the terrorists from detonating the explosives strapped to their bodies. Every terrorist inside uh, the hole where the bombs actually were uh, had the special button and they could uh, actually uh, ignite uh, the bombs at any time. А нам говорят, что они были заминированы, и их пришлось стрелять. Извините, от выстрела детонация. От выстрела может произойти детонация, может произойти взрыв. То есть выстрел еще опаснее, чем просто их задержание. Их, они спали, их надо было разминировать. То есть одеть на них наручники на спящих, разминировать и задержать. But in response, the government now claims the gas which also killed more than a hundred of the hostages didn't actually put the terrorists to sleep. Well, it's, it's, it's easy for us to say to disarm these people uh, when you have the uh, man as a walking bomb. Um, I strongly doubt that. Mostly, uh, and also, uh, this sleep is a very, um, is not a good word for that. They were, uh, let's say this, almost unconscious. They were dis, um, what call it, uh, disoriented. According to Litvinenko, the hostage takers were shot to conceal the truth about the FSB's involvement in the affair. Скорее взрыв произойдет. Их постреляли. Почему постреляли? Потому что кому-то было невыгодно, чтобы они дали показания. То есть они бы начали рассказывать, кто их снабдил, где они были, кто их провозил в Нордост, кто их вооружал, как они собирались в Москве. И, естественно, опять бы вылезли бы уши спецслужб. Именно поэтому их убили, потому что они, когда их убивали, их убивали не как террористов, я вам скажу. Их ФСБ убивало как свидетелей уже. Это была акция отчаяния. Но в то же время я считаю, что за всем этим стоял заговор российских спецслужб. Throughout the drama, the Chechen leadership denied any connection with the terrorist siege. In fact, they condemned it. Ahmed Zakayev says the only benefit was to the Russian side. И надо ставить вопрос так: кому было в это время выгодно, чтобы это случилось? Безусловно, это было выгодно только тем, кто выступал и ратовал за продолжение российско-чеченского конфликта. Это было выгодно тем, которые пытались на протяжении трех лет борьбу за независимость чеченского народа перевести в разряд 
борьбы с международным терроризмом. Zakayev may well plead innocence in the Nord Ost affair, but for a time he was actually accused of planning and directing the terrorist siege. When it happened, Zakayev was in Copenhagen, lobbying for the Chechen cause. The day after the siege ended, Zakayev was arrested by Danish police after Russia requested his extradition. But the delight of the Russians was short-lived, and a month after his arrest, a Danish court rejected the Russian case, claiming there was no evidence. When Zakayev flew to London, the Russians immediately requested his extradition again. But this time they curiously dropped the accusations about Nordost. Definitely um, uh, in uh, London the accusations against Zakayev um, were more clarified and they kind of got the real judicial shape that I didn't want to go inside too deep because this is up to the uh, Russian prosecutor's office. Я намеревался, когда я собрался вылететь в Англию, я знал, что меня здесь ожидает, но <coughs> я на это пошел сознательно. Zakayev's extradition case will be decided by a London court next week. It's excited a lot of interest in Britain, where his supporters, like actor Vanessa Redgrave, are proclaiming his innocence. He's an elected leader. His president was elected in 1997, recognized by every European government, committed no crime, cleared by all security services, including the Russian security services. Lord Judd also questions the Kremlin's motives in pursuing Zakayev as a criminal. What I do know is that in the conversations which I've had over the past three and a half years about the future of Chechnya, he was one of the people with whom it was possible to have the most intelligent, imaginative, sensible discussions about a political way forward. I therefore have to ask myself whether it was altogether accidental that he was taken out of the process at this juncture. Welcome to the House of Lords. У меня двоякий статус. Первый статус – это я являюсь специальным представителем президента Чеченской Республики Аслана Масхадова. И второй статус – я нахожусь в качестве человека, который ждет экстрадиции. Despite his legal struggle, Ahmed Zakayev continues his work as official envoy to the Chechen president. Today he's meeting Lord Ahmed at Britain's House of Lords, lobbying for a political solution to the war. But he thinks that's unlikely, while President Vladimir Putin remains in power. I думаю, что до тех пор, пока будет находиться у власти Путин и сохранится сегодняшний режим, я просто уверен в том, что в России будут продолжаться террористические акты. Я просто в этом уверен. Потому что они выгодны сегодняшнему руководству. Они пришли на волне вот, этой, вот этих трагедий, они сохраняются у власти на волне этих трагедий. But for the Russians, it's the Chechens who are responsible for the terrorism. As for uh, colleagues of Mr. Zakayev, well, you call them rebels, I call them bandits. Uh, uh, you have to excuse me, but I know some, perhaps a little bit more about them than you do. But um, yes, they will not surrender because there are too much blood on their hands uh, and they don't have a choice. They either will be captured and courted and sentenced by the court that that's, they didn't give a chance to some other people they executed, or they will be destroyed. More than six months after the deadly theatre siege, there are now two starkly different views about who was responsible. Either the Russian government's official account of desperate Chechen terrorists is accepted, or the Kremlin is covering up evidence of its own involvement. I'm rather doubtful as to whether we'll ever know what really happened and who really organized what and who really uh, is involved and who really isn't involved. 
I mean, I think there is a lot of treachery in the Chechen story. With the Council of Europe still pushing for the establishment of an independent war crimes tribunal, the Chechen rebels are confident that they'll soon have their day in an international court. Или же я международный террорист номер два после Усама бен Ладена, или же Владимир Путин военный преступник после Милошевича. И пусть суд приносит выносит такое решение. Я я готов к тому, чтобы суд рассматривал именно эти два вопроса. А готов ли к этому российский президент? Вот это время покажет. Oh,